All right. Hi, I'm Aaron Heiser with Makers Leather Supply, and uh, in this video, we are going to build a, a pad folio. Um, we're going to have three different sizes of templates available. Um, this is actually the middle one. This is the steno size pad folio, but the build is going to be the same on the uh, the steno size as well as the full size, and then the, uh, the 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 smaller one, the mini pad folio, which would be for like a five by eight notebook. Um, will be a, it'll be a different style, so we'll do another video on it. But this video will do for the steno size uh, notepads, which are six inches by nine inches. And uh, sorry, there it is, steno size, um, and then also the full size, like regular um, people call them legal pads, but from what I remember, the legal paper is fourteen inches long. But anyway, the standard uh, eight and a half by eleven pad of paper. So in the kit, the template kit, this is what's involved. Um, much, like the, uh, much like the money clipper wallets that we did, I'm gonna bring the camera down just a little bit so we can see the desk here now that I'm done introducing myself. Um, much like the uh, money clipper uh, that we did, um, I, I couldn't decide, do we do it with kind of contemporary look or do we do it with more of a Western style cut? And well, the answer is why not just do both? So, um, in both the steno and the full size, you will get um, the the ability to do both. Um, so here's going to be the binding on the uh, the the notebook. Um, this is the front, back, and liners right here. Um, and uh, so yeah, this one's the binding right here. So if you want to do that Western style cut, you can follow this one right here. If you want to do more contemporary and just have it squared, then you do, you'll, we'll cut around this one side, then we'll flip it around and cut around it again um, so that you don't get the, uh, the scalloping in there. Um, and then for the interior, there'll be a um, card pocket, a uh, pen pocket, and also just a, a regular pocket that you can stuff paper and things like that in. So once again, we have um, Western style cuts. So there's the Western style um, pen, business card, and paper pockets right there. And then the more contemporary um, regular style um, going to be the, uh, the, the business card, the pen, and the paper style pocket right here. In this video, I'm going to do the contemporary one. If I was going to do some floral tooling or anything like that, I would definitely do the Western one, but uh, I'm, I'm not tooling this at all. This entire notebook is going to be made of English bridal. A um, couple of reasons, one of them being that I just don't have the time to tool this. Um, when I make the mini pad folio, we're probably going to use one of our new pattern rubs, and, and we're going to tool that one. Um, really excited about the pattern that we're going to put on it. So it's it's going to be a lot of fun. It'll be its own video just in the tooling. Um, and then there'll be another video on the build itself. So that'll be fun. Um, anyway, so we're going to get started. Um, I did go ahead and cut out a couple of things um, already, okay? And then I just rough cut out everything else so that we could have smaller pieces right here on the table as opposed to um, having to pull out a big old side of leather. Um, so anyway, what I did cut out are the front and back pieces. Let me just get all these templates out of the way until we need them. Um, I use this one right here. It says um, steno pad folio, six by nine pad, front and back, cut two from six to nine ounce leather, anywhere in there. I personally on these, I really like the rigidity of having the thicker leather because if someone's standing up and having to write on it, it helps them. Um, other than that, anything down to about six ounce would be fine, but I do like to make them out of the thicker leather. Um, so I cut my front and my back pieces out of nine ounce. Um, so they're, they're kind of heavy and I cut them exactly to the size of that template. Now for the lining pieces, you're going to use the exact same piece of template, but, um, you are going to... Sorry, my mouse is right on that stop button, and I'm not sure I hate to accidentally hit that. Uh, anyway, so you're going to use the exact same template, but you just want to oversize, overcut your pieces just a little bit so that you can get some good edges later. Um, but I, I'm lining this with two to three ounce um, English bridal, same color and everything. I want this entire notebook to be uh, one color. 
And uh, sadly enough, it's going to match the biker wallet that's going to sit beside on the shelf over there. But meh. So anyway, um, but yeah, you're going to cut out two more of these and you just want to cut them out a little bit larger than your front and back pieces. Okay. So that is what I've already um, prepared. All right. Now, uh, beyond that, we're going to cut out our binding piece, our binder, and then we'll cut out the pockets. So here's our binder. So what I'm going to do is use a different knife and a different cutting board. Um, my binder, okay, the binding piece should be four to five ounce. All right, something kind of medium thickness, but you want it thinner than the front and the back so that it still folds easily. But you don't want it as thin as say two to three ounce because then the notebook will be floppy and it'll twist on you. So um, what I actually did is I took two pieces of two ounce and just glued them back to back because um, that way that little bit of binding, that one inch of binding that you'll see inside the notebook will be lined as well. Um, not a necessity, but it is something that I like to do. Uh, so yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and cut out this right here. And like I said, I'm going to show you how you just cut part of it and then flip it over and cut the rest and uh, you'll do just fine. It's always so hard to stay within the confines of the uh, cutting surface here when I've got trying to stay on the video. The bigger the project of course then the bigger room I seem to take up. I need to sharpen the knife here, but I'm also just trying to go easy on it and make sure that I don't stretch the leather as I'm cutting it. And I'd rather make a couple of passes at it than have a stretch corner. All right. So I cut three sides. Um, these sides I just kind of cut about halfway, a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is take and turn this around, and I'm going to line up exactly with where I was, and I'm going to line up where the uh, two curves and the point are right up against that line, and then I will continue cutting it out. And there we go. And uh, maybe you saw, maybe you didn't, but a lot of the time when I'm doing something like this, I like to rotate the cutting board instead of rotating the, the, the stencil and the leather because I, I don't want the leather to move on the stencil. So I usually will keep it flat on the cutting board and then just rotate the board so that I can get my maximum uh, cut ability, I guess you could say. Some scrap out of the way here. All right, hopefully, later in the video, I'll remember, but I'm going to burnish those edges before I uh, uh, put them on the, uh, the notebook itself um, because it's impossible to burnish them once they're sewn down to the sides of the, no the front and the back of the notebook. Okay, so we've got that template and those pieces cut out. We'll set them to the side. We will grab this one right here, which is my pocket piece. There we go. All right, and this is two to three ounce, and um, my stencil is good to go, so I'm going to use a scalpel on it. I just put a fresh blade in the scalpel. Anybody that watches these videos knows how much I believe in these things, but they don't work on the thicker stuff, so can't always use them. Beautiful. And again, this, uh, this piece is two to three ounce. It can be made out of a little bit heavier uh, leather if you've got some four to five or um, something like that that you want to use, but uh, two to three is just fine. Two to 
it's really hard when I'm doing these projects not to just pull all the English bridle off the shelves over there and uh, cut up all of it that I need and all of the weights that I need, but, you know, I'm going to save those for the customers, so... All right, so that one was easy. Now for the uh, card and pin pockets. Um, I will mention this on, on, on this video, I'm going to use a sewing machine um, <clears throat> just because I, I need to save some time. It's already late in the evening. I promised Janie Sue I wouldn't be here all night. And uh, if I was hand sewing this, this would be quite the lengthy project. So I'm gonna be uh, using the machine on this one. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is, um, this corner is a 90 degree corner right now, but I'm gonna back it up just a little bit and I'm going to put a hole punch right there. All right, and then I will use that to have rounded the corners here. Well, I backed it up way too much. Let me turn that piece around and try that again. Forgive me, folks, I'm a little rusty. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to do that one more time here. Punch a hole there, and then when I push this up against that hole, that'll help me get that little bit of radius, inside radius there, and I won't have to try to get the scalpel around a tight radius of the, uh, of the of a template. So there's your little tidbit for the day. Again, this pocket is going to hold a pin and business cards. Probably sure how, but I got to get away from the template just a little bit there, so correct that. Still good to go everywhere, so. All right, um, the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna burnish some edges uh, before I start actually putting things together. So this piece is gonna go on top of this piece right here in the corner, just like this. So what I need to burnish is around there, all the way down to there. And um, that way it'll have a nice finished edge to it. And then I also need to burnish this edge right here. The other edges, this edge and this edge, will be burnished with the final um, notebook after it's complete. Um, so yeah, I need to burnish those and then I'm going to sew this one. It'll be sewn one line right here to separate the pen pocket from the cards and then sew another line right here. And then again, this entire thing will be sewn to the exterior um, or the entire uh, binder once it's, it's ready for its final assembly. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and burnish this edge right here and then this edge right here. And while I'm burnishing, I might as well go ahead and do the uh, the binding here that uh, I need to burnish the inside or the two long edges of it. So I'm going to uh, do a little bit of that on the camera and then I'll pause it so this video doesn't get too long. Okay, so what I have here is a couple of Ron's edgers. I've got a full-size edger, uh, round edger number two. And then I've got some Montana edgers for the smaller, the, the thinner leathers, number four and number three. I may even have to go below a number three for this one. Um, I'm gonna need this number two Montana edger here. Sure enough. So this edge right here on the side 
it's not going to be part of a pocket or anything, or it's not going to be like where you would stick anything, um, unlike this this area and this area. So I'm only going to, to edge the top part of it. Okay, I don't want to edge the bottom part of it because I want that to set up against the leather nice and flat. Then this part right here, I will burnish, or I will edge both the top and the underside. Okay, and again, this one here is going to be sewn against the project itself, so I'm going to only do the top side. And then the part, top of the pin pocket here, I'm going to do the top and the bottom again. And again, that's because, you know, things that objects are going to stuff behind and everything, you want it to have a nice rounded appearance, and it, um, it does help you also to be able to stuff something in there, like a pin or a card. Um, but the other sides, you want them to set flush, flush up against the leather, so when you burnish them, you don't want to burnish them completely round. Um, it's just one more of those things, you know, I try to try to help folks have, you know, the most professional results that they can in our videos. Um, and that's just one of the little tricks that I can help provide, hopefully. So um, I'm going to go ahead on this one. I'm, all, I'm going to do both sides of it because it is a pocket that stays away from the leather. So I will edge top and bottom on it. Um, this would also be a really good time for a creaser. Um, I'm not going to crease in this video um, just because I, I've got some new creasers I want to play with. Um, something that we're thinking about carrying here in the store. But uh, a creaser is simply a, a tool that leaves a, a, a small, light, decorative line right around the edge. And it's one of those things you really don't notice when it's there and when it's not. But overall, once again, it gives a really nice finished appearance. So very nice. All right. Um, the last thing I'm going to um, to burnish here is going to be my binding. And again, I've got two finished sides here, except this side has a little bit of a flaw in it. This side has some belly to it, so it also has a tiny bit of a line there, but I kind of like those kind of lines. So um, the reason that matters right now is because, once again, one side of this is going to be sewn to the leather, and the other side is not, so I need to only burnish this, or I only want to edge the side that is, is away from the, uh, that's not going to be sewn up against something else. Yep, you can tell that's belly leather with how that just edged right there. But we'll fix it when we burnish. I'm just like you guys, folks, I, uh, I try to use every bit of this leather that I can. Stuff's expensive. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to start burnishing. Um, how I burnish, I am going to dye it first. Then I'll use my Ron's Edge Rub and my canvas to, uh, to, 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 to do the burnishing itself. Okay. So I will go ahead and dye all of those edges that we just um, just rounded off. Uh, on this one, I'm not worried about the top and the bottom yet because once the entire thing is sewn together, I'll burnish that with the rest of the notebook so that it appears as one. Um, just using a wool dauber, some Angelus medium, yeah, medium brown leather dye here. And uh, just hitting up that edge. And uh, once it's burnished, it'll sure make a pretty, pretty edge. And with the notebook being all one color, it'll, it'll really be nice that it has those darker lines around the edges. And this is another place where having that tiny little radius there is going to help. If we didn't put that tiny radius in there, we wouldn't be able to get dye all the way down into that corner. And so you'd have a blank spot there and it would not look as nice and professional. All right. 
We're going to get those edges burnished up right quick. And believe it or not, I'm already thinking ahead in my, my mind here and everything, and heck, we're a third of the way done already. <laughs> kind of. So um, I'm going to get my Ron's Edge Rub. I'm just going to do a little bit of rubbing with the, uh, the Ron's Edge Rub and the, uh, the canvas. Anybody that's ever struggled with edges and you do a lot of veg tan type work, um, you really owe it to yourself if you've never tried any Ron's Edge Rub to give it a try. Um, the, that little eight ounce bottle is expensive at $15, but honestly, that little eight ounce bottle is going to last a long time. So it's worth it. I didn't one of our Monday night videos on edge burnishing, but it was almost a year ago now probably, so probably should do another one. A lot of people struggle with edges. Once I get multiple layers putting together and everything, I'm actually, I'm going to sand edges before I burnish them. And that will help to, uh, to keep them nice and smooth and make it look like the edge of the leather is only one piece and not two or three stacked together. All right, I'm not done yet. <laughs> Sometimes this floppy leather can be difficult to uh, burnish the edges on just because it's kind of floppy. Um, I do try to pick leather that is kind of rigid. I mean, I don't, with this big pocket here, I don't want it flopping around inside the notebook and flopping over when it's clo slammed closed or whatever. So, I mean, it is semi-rigid, but it's, it's just still very thin leather. All right, so there it is. That is a really nice shiny edge. I'm trying to get it on video, but very nice. You can't tell that it's two pieces of leather uh, glued together. It just looks like a nice piece of finished leather. So, all right. The next thing that I am going to do, I am going to go over to the sewing machine and um, I am going to sew these two pieces together. And what I'm going to sew, if I can find my ruler, I'll just use the template here. What I'm going to sew is I'm going to sew one line just like that right there, and then another one just like this right here. And I'm going to stop just a little more than an eighth of an inch from the bottom on both of them. And that'll be that. That's that's all I'm going to sew um, to put these pieces together. So I'm going to pause the video here, and when I come back, that will be sewn. All right. So I went ahead and sewed uh, this line and this line right here. And um, so that is the interior pocket uh, and put together and ready to go. Now, next thing I want to sew 
is I want to sew part of the binder onto the notebook. Um, I say part of it because part of it's going to be sewn now and then part of it's going to be sewn after the liner is in place. Um, this binding right here, I uh, really wish I knew where my ruler was. Uh, let me grab it real quick. All right, so this binder right here is three and about a half inches wide, okay? And what I'm figuring here is that we're going to overlap it on the book by about anywhere between three quarters to one inch. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to split the difference there, and I'm going to do seven eighths of an inch uh, just to be difficult. But uh, anyway, we're going to overlap it seven eighths of an inch onto the, 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 the book. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll take my ruler here and I'll measure my seven eighths of an inch and I'll just scribe a little line very lightly. There we are. I'm going to scribe a line very lightly. I'll use my wing dividers here um, just because they have a Kind of a rigid point there. Seven eighths of an inch from the edge. Okay, real light line. It's not uh, not easy to see at all. Um, you don't want to make it a, a huge. You don't want to gouge it. You don't want to make it a huge line because you don't want it to show up in your finished project product. Okay, I'll do the same thing here. Now, this is where you have to keep in mind if you have tooled this front and this back. Um, you need to keep in mind that, um, you know, the, the, the back is going to be upside down. Okay. So like right now it's ambidextrous. It doesn't matter because there's no tooling. There's no up, there's no down, there's no backwards. But when you go to put these two pieces together, one of them is going to have to flip over. So that the binding will match up. All right, so we are going to sew this backing together with the binder just like this. Okay, just putting those lines right there under the seam. Okay, and when I do this, I'm going to sew this outside line here. All right, and in a few minutes, we'll come back and we'll sew an inside line, but that's after we have the lining pieces installed. Okay. So right now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to get glue, um, contact cement right there, right there, and then right there, all right? And I need to be very cognizant of my 7 eighths of an inch. I don't want glue outside of that boundary because you don't want glue on your finished project, on the outside or the inside. So here I am going to... Uh, mark some lines on here. This is on the inside of my binder because I want to know where my contact cement needs to stop. Okay. The jar is getting kind of empty. I need to refill it here. And I'm just going to slather it on there. Uh, I'm not really going to be too particular about how evenly coated it is except for right up on the edge because I want that edge to look like it is welded together. You get a piece of paper here. I am the world's worst at not having something under my stuff when I glue it and then having to clean glue off my cutting board all day. So. There we go. Any glue that I got on my, my finished, my burnished edge there, I'm going to wipe off here in just a minute once it kind of gets tacky so that it'll just peel off instead of being gooey. No one likes gooey.
so there's that piece. Now I'm going to do these uh, outside pieces. And again, the, the binding on front and back is going to have two sew lines, but this first one is just going to be before the liner is in place. The second one will be after the inside liner is in place because it will also help to hold in that liner. And um, I am actually making a huge mistake right this second, so I'm going to regress a little bit. What I want to do, no, I don't want to. Never mind. I'm not making that big of a mistake yet. Sorry about that, folks. I lose my place sometimes. Um, the The problem going on in my head was the uh, the burnishing of the inside of this line here but I can't do that until I have the liner on it also so it's going to be fun to do in a little bit this clue has been in here for about six months or more so it's starting to get kind of thick All right, now I will take this piece and again, I will um, kind of clean the glue off of the, uh, the edges here and it just rolls right off after it's tacky. That's why I waited a second to do it. Um, since those are, edges are well burnished, if, if they weren't very well burnished, then I might have a little bit more of a problem sticking to it. All right, so I'm gonna take that and I'm going to stick it down, being very careful to get it accurate up against that line. Not too high, not too low. And then again over here. All right, so um, I'm going to pause the video again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sew down both of those edges right there. Um, I will go ahead and take a stitch mover to it and uh, have a nice groove to go down. And then I'm going to sew it. Do that one more time. I didn't get much of a bite on it because I didn't press down too hard. Again, that's kind of some belly leather right there, so I didn't want to scratch out from under me. All right, so I've got my grooves. I am going to go over there to the machine and uh, um, I'm just going to sew those two lines down. So I'll be right back with you. All right, so I went ahead and sewed that binding down. Um, I'm going to use my presser foot set a little bit light on that machine, or uh, a little heavy, I guess. 
this is lighter or uh, thicker leather than I usually have been using on it. So we'll let a couple of those presser foot marks there. I'm going to take my scalpel here. Uh, in the biker wallet video, I mentioned about cutting threads off right at the base of the leather um, without accidentally nicking your leather. Um, and somebody said that was a really good tip. So maybe if someone's watching this video that didn't watch that one, take a really sharp scalpel blade or something like that. You set it right up against the base of that thread. And then you don't move the scalpel. You move the thread. Okay. And there it goes. It's going to cut it off right there, even with it. And it's not going to, uh, to, to cut up your leather accidentally. So it's, it's, it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good method. So... All right, throw those on the floor so I can sweep later. Get bored if I don't have something to sweep. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the liner in, okay? Now there are different rules for the front one and the back one, okay? And I don't really have a, a front and a back picked out. There's not really anything that I think should necessarily be on this side or that side of this one. Whatever. So the different rules are this. What you need to do on both of them is cut you a nice uh, flat straight edge right there on the very edge of it. So you have something to line up with the inside edge of your project here. Okay. So you'll do that with both of them. Where the difference is going to be in these two is that one of these you're going to cover in contact cement and glue completely down. The other one you're only going to glue just around a quarter inch of the outside edge. That's all. And I'll show you why. It's because we have to be able to stuff that notebook in between the layers of, of this and this. Okay. Um, some folks will make a whole extra pocket that goes up there. I don't like to do that for a couple of reasons. One, it just adds thickness. Two, it's a whole nother, you know, like this one's not as big, but on the, the full size one, that's a whole square foot of leather right there. You could be using for something else. And then three, if you do it right, it looks very professional. And again, it, it, it keeps it slim and, and not as as, uh, as thick. So, all right. So what I'm going to do is, like I said, the first thing you have to do is to um, straight line both of your, uh, your edges. Again, I just kind of rough cut these out so they definitely don't have any kind of a straight edge to them. So I'm going to take my ruler, get all the way out there to the outside edge of it that I can. Then I'll take my nice sharp scalpel and straighten that edge out. And again, this is so that I can lay it up against the inside edge of the, uh, the front or the back piece. And that way I know that when it lays out there, it's going to go nice and flat with the rest of the project. All right, so there's one. Now I will do the other. Okay, so there's those. We'll do the front one first because it's going to be the easiest one. Let's check it one more time to make sure there shouldn't definitely be a front and a back here. All right, so we're going to do this front one first. Again, it's going to be the easiest one. What I'm going to want to do is lay that up there, um, even with the inside of that piece there. All right, and I just want to check to make sure that it's overhanging the front on all sides. That means that, um, you know, so that way it's not accidentally cut too small, um, because this is, you know, that, that's what matters with good edges. If this thing is even a 18th of an inch, a 16th of an inch, a 32nd of an inch too small, you're not going to have professional edges on this thing. So it's got to be 
bigger than the back piece so that you can trim it off nice and flush once it's glued together. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, except again, we're not going to glue the entire thing down. We're just going to glue the edges of it down, okay? Um, to put the glue on this, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get pretty sloppy with it. I'm just gonna kind of pour a big glob of glue and then spread it all around. Um, and then the same thing over here. I, I do need to get some paper out because again, I'm gonna get sloppy. And uh, yeah. Have, I've got giant rolls of paper in the back back there, but I was lazy and I was like, oh, there's printer paper up here. I'll be all right. And, yeah, I'm all right, but don't be lazy like me, folks. Do it right. The uh, local newspaper sells me giant rolls of paper, their ends of paper, for uh, I think it's a 50 cents a pound. So I get these giant rolls for a couple of bucks. All right. On this piece, I don't care. I'm just going to get it everywhere. On the other piece, though, I, I care a little. But I want to make sure that it gets all the way out to all the edges so that when I glue it together, it'll get a nice, pretty... This is, again, this is... You're already starting to work on your edges, and you don't even know it. Um, but if this is contact cemented really, really well to the, um, to the outside piece, then you'll have a better burnished edge. Guaranteed. Even if you have no clue how to burnish an edge, this will still help. over here so I can put them over in the thin spots over here. It's all about working together. Even though the glue has no idea it's working together. Cover that piece up. Okay, and again, I'm going to pour a little bit of glue in here, but I'm going to care a little bit more about how much I get in there. Start spreading it around. I do want to spread it all the way up to this inside edge, but I don't want to go over the inside edge. Because I don't want the glue in my binding. Again, granted, I can easily rub it back out once it uh, gets tacky, but that's just extra work. Who wants to do that? Janie said we're having breakfast for dinner tonight. That makes me happy. So when this video is done, I'd like to go have it. Again, I'm going to make sure that every little centimeter, every little quarter inch, every little bit of this thing has got a little bit of glue on it. It doesn't have to be thick, but it has to be there. set up for just a second and we'll press those two pieces together a 
nothing like coffee at 5 something p.m. or whatever time it is. Okay, so I want to make sure I line up that inside edge as perfectly as I can. Press it down. Then I'll just work my way towards the outside of the notebook. If you just drop this thing down, one, you risk missing your edges, of course, and then two, you could get a bubble in the middle of it. And if you've got really, really good contact cement, that bubble will be there because it has nowhere to go. All right, use my roller here. Make y'all listen to the squeak. All right, I feel really good about that. That's um, that was a home run as far as lining it up and getting it all on there right. Um, kind of worries me about the next one because that means there's now room for screwing up since I didn't screw up the first one. It's just kind of how my shop works. All right, so again, we're gonna take and put glue just on the outside edges of this. All right, now. To do that on the, the other piece here, we kind of need to do a tiny bit of prep work. So we're going to lay this right on that inside there. And we're going to flip it over and I'm going to draw with an ink pen the border of where my glue should start so that it can go a quarter of an inch in. I sure hope that makes sense. All right. Okay, so I'm lining up that inside edge right there and this inside edge right here. I'm going to draw with an ink pen because this is oversized. Not much oversized, but a little bit. I'm going to draw my rough border here. And again, um, this is a half an inch on each side, um, bigger than the little notebook we're using. So it's okay if you get a little bit off, um, but we're going to use a quarter of an inch just to stay safe. Okay, there's nothing worse than being finished with your notebook, getting all excited. You go to put your, uh, your notebook in it, and you find out that you have glued it out. Okay, it does happen. Um, there are ways to fix it. We'll talk about that once we get to that point because heck, maybe we're going to do it. Who knows? Push my glue brush down a little more because I am scraping the bottom of this jar here. All right, so I'm going to wipe most of the glue away and I'm just going to basically do one brush width all the way around. Because that's it. That's all I got. Um, this brush has been trimmed down. Um, that was a little trick Peter Main gave me that, uh, you know, when these brushes come, they, uh, they're very hairy. They're not very, uh, you're not very precise at being able to, to place the, the cement exactly where you want it. Um, so Peter was like, oh yeah, you just take a knife and just chop it right off. And so he took an extremely sharp knife and literally put it on the table, chopped it down. And man, this brush has never been so great. There we go.
All right, so I did that quarter of an inch all the way around on that part. Now I'm going to do it on this part here. Basically, I'm just wiping it right on that line, and then the brush is, of course, overhanging both sides of the line, and it's working out just fine. Okay, done with blue for a little bit. Get my blue and paper out of the way. And then once again, I'm going to lay down that flat edge right up against the other flat edge. And then I'm just going to press it down all the way around. And it should line up just fine because we made our ink mark. All right. Some of the excess glue off my hands. Now we're going to trim the liner just a little bit. I'm going to use my squeak roller here. Turn it over, we've got our lines. I just barely missed that line just a little bit, so I think we're just more than fine on this. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the uh, around the liner here. Okay, now the other side.
right. And there's what we're left with. Um, I am going to take a nice edge rounder, or uh, yeah, well, I'll do that after I'm after after I've stitched. Um, okay, so I'm going to take my pocket pieces here, and uh, one second, be very sure that you know which side you did your um, cut your. Uh, pieces out of or you have your um, the center of it not glued this is it right here I can feel it bouncing up and down so what I'm going to do is um, glue this piece in right here and I'm going to I forgot to set up my sander so I'm going to pause the uh, pause the video and go out there and set up my sander and uh, that way I can do all the, the edge burnishing in just a few minutes All right, sorry about that. I had to go out there and get my sander. I forgot all about setting that thing up so I could get these edges done here after we uh, do some sewing. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I am going to glue this pocket down to to the front side here. And uh, better get my paper. I'm just doing the very edge of it, last quarter inch or so, because it is a pocket. I'm not trying to glue it closed, but I do want it secured to the book when I go to sew it to alleviate any issues. And also, I uh, my glue when I put this part together, I didn't glue it, so I probably should just to be on the safe side. So I'm just going to run a little bit of glue right there, and on this side of it. Again, just to be safe. Now I'm going to come over here to the notebook and I'm going to glue the same things. So what I want to do is I want to mark where this will be on the notebook so I don't get glue any higher than the, than the pocket's going to be. Okay, so I'm just going to take my fingernail and put it right there at the edge of that. And then I'll bring it over here. And do the same thing right here with my fingernail and that way I can put a little bit of contact cement on those edges as well give it something to stick to go. Give that just a second to set up. I will go ahead and glue that pocket down. <clears throat> and then I'll set the entire thing down right there just like that we are starting to have a notebook come together folks okay so i'm about to go back over to the sewing machine look i missed a thread where's my skull? Okay, so like I was about to say, I'm going to go back over to the sewing machine. And 
and I am going to sew two frames. I'm going to sew one right here, and I'm going to sew the other right here. In order to do that, I need to mark this stitch line right here, or these two stitch lines, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, stitch groove these, uh, these outside ones here. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a leeway with the stitch groover here. I'd rather sew a little bit further from the edge than get too close and have the sewing machine um, come out from under the edge because that's just terrible on the back side when that happens. When you're running your stitch groover, you got to be very careful not to overrun your corners. So you go up to where you think that corner is and you stop a little bit short of it because you can always go back and regroove just a tiny bit more, but you can't take away a groove that you already cut. Okay, now on this inside edge, I know that there's seven eighths of an inch of overhang right here. So I'm gonna play it safe and I'll probably go about five eighths of an inch in with my sew line so that I know that I am safe. I'm not overdoing it. This is where having a ruler you can see through really helps out. Um, my rulers have an eighth of an inch grid all the way down them, and that really does help. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Berry King edger here, or stitch groover, I mean. Sorry, I didn't account for the width of the groover, so let me move it back just a tiny bit more. I'll use the free end of the groover and cut my groove. Just like that. Okay, now I'm going to go to the other side of the notebook and do the exact same thing again. So, go all the way around the edge, making sure not to overcut my corners. Now, I've got two choices on what I can do to sew this. Um, I can sew all the way down, make that step up, and then sew all the way around. Or I can stop my sewing there and do basically two small C shapes. I would do one this way and then another one this way. Um, it's six and half, six in one hand, half a dozen in the other as far as which one you choose to do. Um, I personally do not like stepping up like that on the machine. If I were hand sewing it, I would have no issue whatsoever doing that. But on the sewing machine, I, I don't really like doing it. So I hadn't really decided what I'm going to do yet. So I guess it'll be a surprise. When I'm on the sewing machine, I'll kind of figure it out and do what feels right.
Okay, I took the edge guide off the uh, stitch groover here so that I could get a little bit more accurate. I didn't want to do that a while ago because I didn't want to um, lose my, my place on the edge guide and uh, get outside of my, uh, my stitching. All right, so here we have it. Um, we're going to go ahead and sew those two lines, and then I'll be right back with you. All right, folks, so I have now sewn all the way around. I ended up just going ahead and sewing the entire thing um, in one big uh, square rectangle. Um, so, yeah, and it, and it turned out just fine. Um, on the inside, I did get pretty danger close to the inside edge right here, which is fine. Um, danger close is okay. Over the line, not okay. And then over on here, that was nice and safe. Um, so uh, I'd had a lot more control over it if I was hand sewing, but I'm a little bit out of, out of practice on the, the machine I was using, which is a class 18. I, I don't use that machine way too much anymore so all right so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to edge these two insides right here and just kind of round them off make them prettier and that's it that's all i'm going to do to that one i might hit it with a dauber i haven't decided yet but i just want it to look nice all right um, I'm going to hit the sander right quick and uh, I'm going to sand all these other edges so that they're nice and flush and flat and pretty and ready to go. Um, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to, to, to burnish them. And then we're going to punch two little bitty holes, cut a slit and stick our notebook in it and call it a day. So give me a second here. I've got two different um, sanders set up over here, or burnishers. These are uh, Leather Machine Company burnishers. And the only reason I have two of them because I'm actually going to hand burnish. But I have two of them because I actually have three different grits of sandpaper. This one's uh, pretty harsh. It's uh, um, a very coarse grit, I think like 40 grit. This one right here, I believe is 120. And then over there we have one that's like 800. And man, I mean, it almost burnishes it by itself. Um, but anyway, I just, I wanna get the glue off of it first and foremost. Get any of the glue off the edges. And I want to make sure the edges are, are good and squared up um, with the liners just so that I can get a pretty burnish. I don't, I don't think I've said enough that, you know, we want pretty edges. They make the world of difference between a professional uh, finish and a uh, more amateur finish, I guess you could say. All right, so that's plenty for the course. I didn't do much. I'm not trying to take a bunch off. I'm just trying to even them up a little bit. I'm gonna go to this medium grit here. Do a little bit of finessing. like when you're working with wood, um, if you jump from a really coarse grit to a really fine grit, you're going to have to work harder. So I don't mind taking an extra couple of minutes here and uh, going through the middle. Get the cords up from under here. Alright, so now I'm going to bring over this finer grit one. Um, David from Weather Machine Company found that uh, this fine one really works well. Um, this is honestly my first time to mess with it. He brought them to me last week. And boy, that is nice. It is really smooth. I will turn this down a little bit though. Oh, I can tell I'm gonna love this.
All right. I am liking that. David, if you're watching this, I appreciate the finer grit paper. And I will spread the word about how awesome it is on those. Put my little spacer back on my Barry King Groover so I don't lose the daggum thing. All right. Um, really thick edges here. I'm going to use the number four Ron's Edger. Um, most of this front cover is pretty daggum thick um, because it's got several layers. So I'm just going to go ahead and use that number four and get a good roundness to it. Just like that. Boy, that looks nice. I'm excited about this. It's another one that I'm going to have a hard time not making this my personal notebook and letting it be the store's display for the templates. I have that problem a lot. And do the back side of this number four. I'll just go a lot easier on it. I probably should reach back there and grab a three, but we've already discussed that I get lazy sometimes. All right. do that binding piece yet. I'll do it in a second. I do need to grab a thinner, a, a number two, for that little bit of binding right there because it's much thinner than the rest of this. It's coming up to only about five ounces when the rest of this is all anywhere from 10 to 12 ounces. Maybe even a little bit higher, heavier in some areas. All right, so I'll grab my number two here. Now, when you're doing this area right here, you know, that pushes down. So you got to be really careful not to just take a serious bite out of it right there with your edger. So go really easy on it and cross that little bridge, and you'll do just fine. Um, there's an edge I forgot. Um, if, you, if you push down hard on it, you're, you're going to ruin it, guaranteed. It's going to take a giant bite out of it, and there's no way to recover from it. All right, down here on the belly end, we'll see how we... Not as pretty, but we'll make it. Okay. I know you're probably excited to be done with this video soon, but I'm just excited to see how this sucker turns out. I am just super excited. So, let me grab my die. We will die all these edges that we just uh, rounded, and then we're going to get to burnishing. Seems every time I do one of these videos, it gets a little longer and a little longer. If, uh, crunch for time I apologize for that but I like to be as thorough as I can I probably should have shown on this video I've shown on many others um, these daubers when I use them I take them first and I burn them with a cigarette lighter um, you have to do that first I saw somebody on Facebook um, did it after she had already gotten a bunch of dye on the dauber this dye is alcohol based, so basically she made herself a small torch. And she uh, she was on Facebook kind of wondering what she had done wrong there. Has to be a brand new dauber, guys. Um, take it outside if you can, um, if, if you're in a small space, because it is going to smell like burnt carpet. 
you burn it until it just shrinks down to the size you want. And what you're doing is you're controlling all those big loose fibers and stuff like that. And you're making it a smaller, more manageable dauber to be able to use on your project. So you can do edges and stuff without getting dye everywhere. And this is um, Angelus brand uh, medium brown dye. I like how it's going to burnish to a, kind of a dark brown tone. It'll give a nice little accent to the rest of this notebook being uh, the, the lighter color that the rest of the notebook is. Um, this notebook is, again, it's made of English bridal, uh, Wicked Craig English bridal. The color of it is chestnut. And I am just in love with this stuff. It's the same stuff I made the biker wallet out of the other day. And uh, it has quickly, quickly, quickly become my new favorite leather. Um, I like it because it's finished and it's it's nice and smooth. It's got a little bit of waxy, uh, waxy tone to it, but yet it is vegetable tanned, so your edges burnish beautifully. And in case you hadn't noticed in this video, I like edges. All right, I put my die away. No, I'm not. I'm gonna risk it all. I'm gonna get risky here and I am going to hit up this inside edge with die just a little bit. Okay, don't try this at home unless you've got really steady hands, which I do not. I just wanna hit up just this edge right here. Not too bad, not too good. Especially this side right here where we got the stitching so close, I'm trying really hard not to dye the stitching because that could come out on the outside too. So I got it pretty good. All right, bust out the Ron's edge rub again and burnish these uh, these edges, these sides, and um, then we're going to have us a notebook. Well, we got to cut, cut the spot for the actual notebook to go into. Get this spot just a little bit more with some dye. Perfect. All right. The thing with the Ron's Edge Rub, I was talking about earlier that a, a small bottle of it will last quite a while. Um, you don't have to put a lot of this stuff on here. Uh, as a matter of fact, you put too much and it's just not gonna work at all. But um, a little dab will do you. Uh, when I was in the military, um, Toby, who used to own Ron's, would uh, send me a bottle of it everywhere I lived. I don't call and order a bottle of it and I always ordered a quart. I'd be in that location for two years or so, maybe three. And then when I moved again, I would still have half a quart or more left and uh, I'd have to throw it away and order it at the next location because they, they wouldn't ship liquids, no matter how precious the liquids were to me. Pretty edges.
last side, guys. I'm going to move on to the very last part. So fast to drop my cloth. Beautiful. take our little notebook we're gonna place it right here and we want to kind of place it right in the center top to the bottom left to right and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my stylus and I'm gonna just mark two little spots here just below the spiral if you're not using a spiral then just below the binding um, or where the, 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 the binding stops I guess you could say um, uh, I'm going to take my stylus, I'm going to mark those two little marks, but then I'm not, uh, I'm going to, um, measure before I punch the holes to make sure that they're good and even on both sides. Okay, so there's my two little holes. So I'll take my ruler here. All right, using my grid up here, I'm looking, and that's straight all the way across. If I use those two uh, little marks as my guides for uh, punching my holes. Now, this is a tricky part. You got to be careful. I'm going to punch holes right here. I'm not going to punch all the way through all the leather. I'm just going to punch through the first layer, okay, the lining layer. That's it. See, hole came right out. And again, came right out. So now I'm gonna take that sand, uh, my straight edge and my scalpel, and I'm gonna join those two holes. Just gonna cut me a slit right across them. All right, just like I explained on all the wallet videos, the reason that there's holes at the end of this line is to make sure that um, it, it keeps the leather from tearing. It's, it makes it stronger than if you'd have just cut a slit and had it, it abruptly stop, so it keeps it from tearing. All right, now I'm going to check and see if I cut all the way through that or not. I did. And there we go, and I didn't cut through the front of it, so beautiful. Um, I'm first going to put me uh, my, my ruler in here, and I'm going to make sure that that thing's not glued down so much that I can't get my, uh, my notebook in it. So I'm just going to put my ruler in there, create a little bit of space, run along the stitches there. And there's a little bit of glue, but I don't really think it would have been a fear with my notebook. Um, so yeah. And there we have it, folks. That is a pretty cool notebook right there. Um, done up in just, uh, probably two hours of real time, hour and, uh, 25 minutes of video time, so not too bad. Um, I will, I might seek out one of these notebooks that doesn't have a spiral in it. This is just what my local Walmart had for me to buy to make this video. Um, but I probably will seek out one that doesn't have the spiral. I don't really like the spiral and it makes the, the, the book close kind of unevenly. 
So anyway, um, there it is, guys. That's the video. That is the uh, the build of this. Again, this is for the Steno book, uh, the six inch by nine inch, and the regular size um, legal type pad. That's uh, the eight and a half by eleven. By the time this video is on YouTube, both of those will be available on our uh, on our website. Both of those um, template sets and. Um, Tomorrow, the mini pad, I'm hoping I can make another video and the mini pad will be on there too. It is, uh, it's the five inch by eight inch. Uh, it looks just like the normal legal pad, but it's just much, much smaller. Um, so it's a whole different notebook build. I, I wanted to build it a completely different style. Um, since it is so small, the back of it's all one piece and it folds over. Anyway, I, I'm hoping to get to the video tomorrow. I may not because, like I said, there's also a pattern rub involved that I really want to tool on the front of it, and that would be its own video first before I can build the notebook. So um, I, I hope everybody enjoyed the video. I hope everybody was able to learn something. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment them. I try to once a day get on here and answer any questions that are left. And uh, other than that, we uh, we really appreciate you watching. Uh, we appreciate you um, supporting Makers of Leather Supply. Thanks. Have a great night.